Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Trevor, and uh, most of you know that already since you have attended some of our concerts, uh, and you almost certainly know that the students call me DT, which is fine with me, and if you choose to call me that as well, uh, that's okay. We are fortunate in many regards, we're unfortunate in some other regards, but we're, here's what we're fortunate with that we have three teachers in our choral program that work very smoothly together from Mrs. Stockham at the elementary level to Mrs. Trevor at the middle school and then I'm at the high school and we plan concerts together. We plan the literature that we're going to do. <clears throat> and many of you have attended either the Rotary Choral Festival or the Sounds on a Well or both if you've been with the choir program for a period of time. And uh, we are uh, sadly feeling the loss of the Sounds in a Well this semester. Uh, we clearly hope that in the second semester, things are going to be better from a health perspective and that we will be able to go on and do things in a more normal way. However, uh, in the meantime, we have work to do. And so we're uh, trying to be as efficient as possible at helping the students to learn <clears throat> in this unusual situation. I'm recording this on Zoom, which they see me on every time we meet for class. And uh, I'll try to give you just a little idea of what is there. We do want the students to be learning music. All of them have auditioned for choir, have proven that they have the ability and the experience to do the things that we need them to do. And now <clears throat> they have the opportunity to show me, not in the context of a whole choir or in a section, sopranos, altos, tenors, whatever, but they have to show me that they can learn music on their own. And so we've set up some things on uh, the internet and I have chosen to use Google Classroom because of the ease in uploading these recordings to, uh, <clears throat> to, Google, to Google Classroom and then get it into our uh, own file for whichever choir it is. And I'm going to go to shared screen just for a moment and help you to understand what they see and then you'll perhaps get an idea of how we're going about this. Just a moment and I'll be there. Uh, I've chosen to take this one from the Silhouettes period four and this is one of the assignments which is due uh, this well today actually on Friday I'm recording this and it is a piece that I put up uh, two or three weeks ago. It's a piece that we have sung in choir before, Come to Me, Oh My Love, and so here is a recording of a good choir that is singing it, a high school choir in another state. And then down here uh, is the, the printed music, which I have scanned so that they can see the words and the notes just as they were holding a piece of music in their hands. Now, it is a little bit cumbersome that we can't easily have those two things happening side by side. But I've suggested to students that they record what they hear here, download it to their phone or uh, their iPad, whatever. And, uh, and then they are able to practice by streaming the music. Now, the other thing is that these are learning tracks uh, that Mrs. Wingard has prepared for us. And so she has taken, in this case, it's SSA, Soprano, Soprano two and Alto. And she has taken them and played the part for the sopranos in this one and for the uh, altos here. And I think, uh, no, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. All three parts are here. And uh, so they can learn it and then record it. And I have examples th that I've looked at today of students who have done this very successfully. And it's a pretty easy upload. They, they can record it on their phones. They upload it to their own Google Drive. And then from Google Drive, they can upload it to Classroom, and I have it there to be able to review. And uh, it's uh, kind of interesting, actually, because I've auditioned them all uh, I, back in March uh, or since then on Zoom. And now I'm get, getting to hear them speaking, singing, and uh, see if I made the right decision. And so far, what I've heard, I did. One of the other things that we're doing is trying to build their knowledge of music rudiments. Uh, this one is uh, about meters in music, the time signatures and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> these are taught by uh, Gerard Schwartz, who uh, was the director of the Seattle Symphony. He's a world-renowned 
composer, conductor, and now educator. And so he is uh, explaining this as carefully as possible in these brief videos. He uses orchestral examples, but that's all right. That stretches their knowledge just a little bit. We also have on the way, I don't know exactly when we're going to get it, a program called Music First, which uh, we choral teachers have agreed with the two instrumental teachers at the middle schools uh, that this is something that we can use to teach them. And it has elements for sight singing, sight reading, and for recording their own voices. And then we can record a voice and then another voice and another voice and so on. So we get a little experience in doing multi-level tracking, which is how many recordings are made today. I also uh, like to inject something uh, every now and then that just for their interest, <clears throat> where this one is about overcoming adversity. And this is Andrea Bocelli, a world famous soloist, and his now grown son, Matteo. And at age 12, <clears throat> Mr. Bocelli was playing soccer. He took a header and went blind immediately and has been blind for the rest of his life. And I'm saying to the students, that's something to overcome. We can overcome this. And by the way, I think you'll enjoy this duet between father and son, each playing separate grand pianos. It's not a choral piece, but it is something about music that indicates there's much that's wonderful about music and our opportunities to do it. And this is a young lady who auditioned. She sings really well. She's 15 years old, so right in the same age group as many of our students and I just put it up there for them to have a listen. We've gone over the respiratory system and how we breathe for singing and how that matters so much to us in how we produce sound. Uh, and the examples given there, I think, are quite useful. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> this was a little bit tongue in cheek, how to read music in 15 minutes, uh, <clears throat> but there were some nuggets in there that I wanted them to see. Okay, now here is the preparation for the recording. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, I gave indication early on, actually in a letter that I sent out about four, five weeks ago, as to how they would need to record for this class, whichever one they're in. And so that's outlined there, <clears throat> and this gives their voice parts where I've placed them in the choir. And then we are continuing on with this. There are multiple lessons. These, these were actually done for Khan Academy and are now available to us just on, uh, on uh, uh, YouTube. Sorry, <laughs> struggling with my brain this, this afternoon. All right. Uh, <clears throat> and then I want them to hear examples of really great choirs. And this is one that happens to be a Welsh choir that I played for them, a wonderful uh, sound of the choir, 160 voices, from children, probably seven or eight years old, up to adults, many of them their parents, singing together in one choir. And they had the opportunity to hear that and see that and do a little review for me, uh, which is another one of the assignments that they've turned in. Uh, for the second semester, I can go back to uh, looking, letting you look at me. Um, <clears throat> for the second semester, we are making plans to be back in person. We know we can't determine that ourselves. We want to be able to do that, and we're making plans for that. So these songs that they're learning are pieces that we can then put together. They will already have learned them, and it will, should be easy, easy for us to put them together when we meet together in person. What public concerts we'll be able to give, we don't know yet. Um, at risk, of course, is the Rotary Choral Festival. We hope that that will happen because this is the 50th anniversary of that and it's been held every year for the last 49 years. Um, but you know, we have to work with the situation that we have. And nobody invited coronavirus, but it's here and we're just doing the best that we can to cope with it. And I do believe that your students will rise to the occasion and it's been wonderful to see them. I have two other classes that I teach college in preparation, uh, <clears throat> but, and, for, uh, with them, I don't know them really at all, but when I come to the choirs, I'm together with familiar faces and they are always so glad to see me and I'm so glad to see them. It's been a long time since I had a group of students in front of me back before March the 13th. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. My address is btrevor 
at glendora.k12.ca.us. Same address as your children have, only my name is just B. Trevor, no numbers after it. And if you uh, write to me there, I will do my best to be back in time, uh, in a timely way, and then I'll also give you a phone number where you can reach me. All right, I hope that this little spiel about our choirs helps you to understand that we really are alive and kicking and doing things and that you will be able to enjoy this in the future when you hear your students singing together. All right, thank you. Bye-bye now.